A long, long time ago, before I came here, people used to touch me and I'd just go blow. In my old school, I didn't really like the teachers and I always, nearly every day, I do, used to be naughty. And I misbehaved nearly all the time. Special schools give you, like, a advantage, advantage to, like, do um, new stuff and get your behaviour and your courage back. For many of our pupils, having gone through their quite traumatic experiences and then through the experiences of a, an education system that hasn't met their needs and then the exclusion and quite often the stigma that's attached to that. Missed out on huge chunks of their learning because they've been excluded but also missed out on huge chunks of learning because of their emotional barriers. This is a hiding spot. You might think it's just a plot but it's a hiding spot. Children go right down in there in that hole right down in there and they go and hide. This is my friend Carissa. Hi. She likes to play a lot and pick up flowers. And play football. Yeah, play football is your thing. There's Joshua riding his bike. Here's my teacher here, Mr. Fenton. He's our art teacher, our music teacher. And he does loads of stuff, like for the school in Christmas time, helps it all the children do their art stuff. When I came here, I was a bit scared and I was a bit shy. After around like, three months, I made quite a bit of friends. When I first came to this school, I couldn't really read or write. I didn't really know that much of maths. They come to us feeling like they're the failures. So far, the system hasn't worked for them. The system hasn't enabled them to succeed. At Bearman Primary School, they aim to improve the learner's sense of belonging whilst acknowledging the child's loyalties outside the school. They have adopted the systemic approach, which aims to make better connections between home and school life by acknowledging the primacy of the child's family system as a foundation for learning and to give them a stronger sense of belonging and inclusion. When tensions and conflicts are reduced, the child is better placed to engage with learning. Psychotherapist Judith Hemming describes it as solution rather than problem focused. The introduction um, of Judith, who is working on an, a project called Enhancing Children's Learning, will be supporting how we can further develop the way in which we're working in a systemic way to really, again, raise standards and, and truly enhance their learning. Actually understanding what the children have brought with them from home and what those loyalties are and what complex tensions they are trying to manage by their own behaviour is often the critical factor in whether the children can calm down and reintegrate into the school. We can start to look and see where the blocks might well be within a family um, system. But also, not just the children and the families with whom we work, but also the teachers and the staff and the adults within the school. Because what we're finding is different systems are coming together. And we, we do all that we can to remain loyal to our family of origin system. The systemic approach has, has really created a, a more dynamic and full understanding for me which is about seeing each child and even each behaviour and each situation in a context and trying to be aware of, of the different factors and different influences which might be present. The first month, one of my family died. And when that happens, I always get sad. The communication and collaboration that we have in our staff team is all about sharing what we know of the children and sharing what might be important in, in supporting them and responding appropriately to, to their needs and their behaviours. When you're new, they give you sort of like a chance. So, because you don't really know the rules, they give you a chance. You have tea and toast. It's okay, you're right, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I want to do that. Every morning in each of our classrooms, the, the children in the class will sit together like this and, and have what is effectively breakfast for a lot of them. Um, some will have a good breakfast at home, but um, many might not come to school without breakfast. They have to be up very early for their transports. Um, and for a variety of reasons, they may not have eaten. But an equally important purpose, really, is, is the socialisation and time spent together. We're all, we always sit with them as we do at lunch just to model table manners and to guide them because they are more exciting and unstructured times. Which one was your picture, Josh? <laughs> um, the bike fixed my one. 
that one. No, that one's wrong. No. Open that. That one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Open it. Yeah. They're just um, talking now about something which the children made along the same same lines, which is a jigsaw, in which each child made one part of a jigsaw that fit together to make a whole, without pressure to be learning. There's time spent, we're just enjoying each other's company and being members of the same group. And that's the way it relates to the, the systemic thing, really, about belonging to, to, this, to this group. The systemic approach is not really about behaviour management or anything like that. It's much more to do with how to create the conditions for a system to enable its participants to thrive. Because I was just really troublesome when I was small. But then when I started to grow up, I started to see how it's more better to behave nicely. And in school, really helped me with all them stuff. One of the things that uh, we've encouraged teachers to do is to help quieten the children down not so much by ordering them to quiet down, but by using what we know about um, meditative techniques and stilling and so on, really taking seriously the fact that they are bodies, they're not just minds. After each playtime, when the children come back into the classroom, the classroom will have been set up for, for a massage, where the children are in um, pairs. The children feel that it really benefits in terms of calming them down physically and emotionally after their playtime. Thank you to your partner. Thank you. Thank you. Now I've learned from my behaviour, I now calm down a bit more. The amount of energy they're using, dealing with the, that kind of static uh, white noise in their head, actually is nearly all the energy that would otherwise be available for learning. What we found is that attainment just goes up. And I can write properly now and I can read good books and now I can read chapter books. Hopefully, and it's good. The class I teach in has several pupils who find verbal communication quite challenging in the sense that even if they do know what they're feeling and even if they do know why, which is very often not the case, they might not be able to put it into words. This is the rainbow room. Um, and before we used to have this like as um, for play club, but we don't use it anymore. We use it as an um, art therapy sessions and I go there. Almost all of these children are accessing an arts-based therapy. They're developing skills and confidence in communicating what, what they're going through and what they're feeling. You can express yourself. You can tell the lady in here who's called Caroline. She, um, she watches to see how you're feeling and she listens and what you want to do. It allows the therapist to work with a child at a child's own pace to reflect. They really need somewhere that's trusting and private and safe and outside of class. It's very varied as to how a child might use particular things, um, whether it's being able to do things within play and very small scale, creatures and animals and playing out different scenarios. Another child might use um, family figures you can make a mess, you can make absolutely anything in there that you want. Uh, and you can, you can have a bit of fun, try and fix things, solve problems and things like that. If I'm having a problem with Jordan at home, I can talk to the school and they'll talk to him if he won't open up to me. And then they'll give me some feedback on what they feel that I maybe could try a different strategy at home and it always seems to work. If a child comes in from a family system where school is seen as something quite negative, it's really challenging for the child to view school as quite positive. And so to really support the children in changing their behaviours, we need to consider the whole system. And it's really important that not just the child feels that they belong, but that the families are so important to us as well. There's always a contact between the school and the home, so we know what... Um, What's going on at school and the school know what's going on at home so there's that really good partnership between home and school so if there is any problems we can work on it together and just seeing his progress with his schoolwork is just absolutely marvellous. William Shakespeare wrote this on like Shylock play and then for all the olden days and this these days it's been going on for years my lines was, do as I bid you, and 
I'll go in hate. We couldn't do any of the work that we do with the children without that collaboration and support from the parents. They certainly do want the best for their children. We have to recognise that a lot of our children have faced challenges and difficulties that their parents would never have chosen, would never have wished for for them early in their lives. It's critically important for teachers not to stand in judgment over parents, but to recognise that under those circumstances they wouldn't have done any better, and that they are the right parents for that child. And that's quite a strenuous shift for a lot of teachers to make. I go to the coffee mornings, I attended family numeracy course, which me and some of the other parents attended, which we all passed which was good because I got to meet them. When Jordan went to his previous school, he used to have a lot of problems. He couldn't read, write, spell. So then they thought maybe it was best for him to leave that school and attend this school, which he did. And since he has left that school, he's not got into no trouble. He's learned to read, he's learned to write. He's attended four trips one which was abroad to Switzerland. We used to study the mountains because oh yeah, like... we were fascinated. Those mountains like Mount Everest. Let's... So rainforest has less oxygen because they just go there, get the soil and, 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 and timber. And the less trees that there is, the less people there are. Because pollution when... comes like cars and yeah. airplanes. The airplanes and trucks make it's... the most pollution though. Yeah. Trees, you know, trees help us. To yeah. breathe with our breathing, because if we cut all trees down, we won't be able to breathe properly. Like any. We're feeling very optimistic about the fact that it's a not very expensive intervention. And uh, we've had a lot of teachers who were on the verge of giving up teaching who have really got a surge of new optimism and hope. Often our school has been described as the last chance for these kids. It's not, it's the first chance because their early lives mean that they haven't had a chance yet. My, my dream is to have a big house full of gold inside, be the famous person ever in the whole entire world, have loads of friends, make loads of money, even though I got all the money in the world, still want more. Uh, and to be a scientist, I want to be a doctor, and I want to be a doctor in America and have a big house. And I want to live in uh, Los Angeles, in, in California. I want to be a, a judge, a dancer, a singer. And if it weren't for the teachers, we won't be like we want to behave well, know how to read and write properly and anything. What did you notice them doing? Shouted. They shouted? They shouted because they didn't like what you were doing. Are you going to need to have some thinking time to think about that? Or can I trust you to make a better choice next time? Mm. Okay, I'll be